A viewpoint is simply a reference view that you'd like to return to or use for presentation purposes. We introduced viewpoints in model mode in version 17 of AGI 32. Well, for version 18, we've introduced viewpoints in render mode. The viewpoint toolbar in render mode looks and behaves identically to the one in model mode. To set a new viewpoint, simply navigate to the view and click the Add button. You can optionally name a viewpoint by just typing in a name before you hit Add. To adjust a viewpoint, navigate to the new view, click the Update button. In render mode, we've also provided the ability to select from different display settings for each individual viewpoint. For example, in viewpoint 1, we show model overlay. In viewpoint number 4, we've got pseudo color and model overlay. And in viewpoint number 6, we've turned off model overlay and we've got textures on. This is functionality we've wanted to do for a long time. These viewpoints are automatically assimilated into their own pages when using the Create Report function in Page Builder. There's Render Viewpoint 1, 2, there's our Render Viewpoint 4, Render Viewpoint 6. So voila! That is Render Viewpoints. Here's a nifty new command that will save you time when manipulating objects. It's the ability to group objects easily so you can then move, rotate, scale, or change properties. Here I have an office cubicle and a chair. Let's make it a group. I'll swing over and select the new group object command in version 18 of AGI 32. Select the window option. I have the option to name the group if I like or I can even go to Surface Edit, or just click through for speed. Now let's make a couple copies of the group. I can select it as a single object now. Now let's group these. I'll go back to the Group command and window around those. That's now a group of a group, or a nested group. Let's copy a few more of those. Let's rotate one. We could group this selection if we like. It'd be a group of a group of a group. We can move backwards using Explode. So let's select the Explode command and select that group. Now I have the ability to select one instance and move it off. I can explode this one again and now I have the ability to move the chair, for example. It's quite handy. This can also be done in Project Manager. You can see your groups here labeled as Group. You can rename them if you like. So let's select a few using the Shift or Control capability in Project Manager and then right click for the menu. Select Create Group. We've now created another group of a group that contains several groups. Holy cow! Or, likewise, we can right-click and explode that group right back down to the original primitives. Nice! That's grouping objects. We've changed the Object Scale command to be able to act on any of the three dimensions independently or collectively. Let's take our cubicle. It's currently 6.25 by 9.5 feet. Let's make it 7 by 10. We'll go to the Object Scale command. Select a point to scale from. Here's the new dialog. The old way 
you could only scale all three dimensions equally. This still can be done with the lock aspect ratio box checked. But if we uncheck this box, we can now independently scale any of the three dimensions. So let's make our cubicle 7 by 10. So we'll enter a scaling factor of 1.12 for the x direction and 1.05 for the y direction. Let's check it. 7 by 10. Bingo! This also works on groups of objects. Watch the group video. Prior to AGI 32 version 18, in order to disable an object you had to use Project Manager. While you can still do that, we saw this as a very common operation needing more accessibility. So now there is a new command in the toolkit to disable objects. You can use the single, window, or all functions. Here we've got a group of cubicles. You might want to disable them while you experiment with lighting alternatives. Use the command, disable the cubes. You can re-enable them from Project Manager. This command also works with groups. Version 18 introduces a few changes in the object library process that will make life easier for everyone. First, you can now make a library object from multiple library or imported objects without having to explode them. For example, we have this cubicle and this chair. Both are currently library objects in two different libraries in AGI 32. Using the make library object command, we'll window around these two objects. Give it an insertion point, and now we can actually add those two to the object libraries. Second change is we now provide a default library for you to store your objects, if you're not interested in taking the time to create a new library of your own. It's called the User Library. Go ahead, it's all yours. By the way, the reason we don't allow objects to be added to the factory libraries is we overwrite them with each update. You can now export your rendered views at a size larger or smaller than your current display size. Now when using the export command here, or the copy command from the edit menu here, or control C to copy the image to the clipboard, you'll have the opportunity to size the image in this dialog. The maximize size is based on your overall display size, including supplemental monitors. Going larger, i.e. more pixels, is always better for presentation images. As a somewhat related topic, you'll find the same dialog in the main system settings area of AGI 32, from the Defaults tab in the Default Render Viewpoint Capture Size area, Capture Image Settings, this button here. This is not used to set the defaults for the render dialog we just discussed, but rather it is used to set the default for the render viewpoint captures when being used in Page Builder. You probably don't need to adjust this as the based on form size constraint is usually best. And that wraps up all the details on image captures. You can see the entire list of version 18 changes at AGI32.com and in our knowledge base at support.agi32.com.